It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Washington Commanders and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC, as it'll be the Washington Commanders taking on the Atlanta Falcons. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Get strapped in, it's just about time to get the party started. And we are underway from Atlanta. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. So here are the commanders making their way out. And leading them out, their signal caller. Now it is fourth season in the NFL. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass catching abilities. And if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. The RPO, he completes it. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy to try to tackle him. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 22 yards there, a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 38. They'll set up to throw. Over the middle, the catch made by Mitchell. And he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Is this a hold, or did they rough the quarterback? Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. But when it's a star back there, even more so are they going to be diligent about throwing the flag. He'll get that one to Taylor complete. And the commanders are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Now we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commanders in some obvious discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside.
First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Falcons are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. Probably give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And a glance here at their shifty mobile signal caller. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. And Vick's throw there incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Vick. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told him, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Throwing, Vic. All the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Up the middle they go. Done. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. To throw, Vic. Field. Call it a loss of four there on the sack. And speaking of the number four, it brings up fourth down now. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. Remember last time out, they threw the interception on their first drive. Good news, their defense backed him up, so it's still 0-0 here as they begin their second possession. Yeah, and one great way to judge a defense, how do they handle what we call sudden change when all of a sudden, you know, it goes against their offense and have to run out in the field and try and put out the fire. Give this one great kudos for getting out there and not letting that interception lead to points. Excellent job by them defensively. 
Uh, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? The play action fake, they'll look to throw. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. He'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Second and five. They'll keep it on the ground. Riggins, and he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's second and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Washington. A great effort there. 53 yards. And the Commanders get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Vic operating on first down. It's grabbed over the middle by Wayne. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now here's Vic. 
That's caught by Risen. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive play. Zone. Vic will look to throw on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. On second down, it's done. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in full down territory, that really opens things up for you. And he's going to have a Falcons first down, maybe by about a yard as they find a way to convert on third and inches. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Vic now. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. Vic readies to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. From the gun, Vic. Oh, and that is incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Vic with the incompletion on first down, and now that leads to second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Well, we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's his second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say, only in the first quarter. Certainly a shift that he wants to write quickly. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Working out of the gun, Michael Vick. Get this down near the 20-yard line. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Hadn't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder. If he wasn't a first-round pick, they want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there. No hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. A first-down throw coming for Vic. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's White. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. From the shotgun, it's Vic. Over the middle complete. That's Jones. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And it'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. 
After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they come up now, second and goal. Keep leaning on the running game, back to the ground. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They'll run here on third and goal. And he won't get to the marker as they're going to stop it for a second straight play right at the line of scrimmage. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Can this defense hold him out? Here we go now, fourth and goal from the two. Vic to throw it, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And the commander defense able to hold. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, Sure, you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. It's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I don't want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to pump the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. On second down, Washington. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time one has slipped from his grasp. I bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. Now a second and ten. Now back to throw. Washington's got it. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw on that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. Now Sanders. 
A punt of 46, a return of five. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, try to put together another drive. A yeah, simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. We've seen the pressure get to him several times in this game. There, though, we see him escape it. And we've seen this rookie video before as well. That type of pressure, oftentimes, what do you resort to? Your legs, try and escape. What you hope is that this doesn't become habit for him, that he learns how to handle the pressure, still keep his eyes downfield, and make some throws. That throw by Vic, incomplete. They well, certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Vic with the incompletion on first down, and now that leads to second and ten. He'll look to throw. He completes it right side of the way. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Vic. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's gonna have a Falcons first down. They needed four, he doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Andrews. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Second down, Vic. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Back to throw. Vic. And it is caught, and he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far, and never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Looking to throw, Vic. And he's got his star receiver, it's Jones, for the Falcon touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Falcons are an extra point away from evening this one up. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point right down the middle, and we are tied at seven. 
A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates in a Julio Jones touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. He'll drop to throw. And this one too low. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw here. Well, it's caught on the right side of Smith. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. They need to make some adjustments there in the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Throwing, Vic. It's caught. This is White. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw, Vic. Looking deep for Julio. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. Vic with the incompletion on first down, and now that leads to second and ten. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 27-yard line. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. 
Well, Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think but, you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> but I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. Second down and eight. Now Vic running the option left and holding it maybe the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. He's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Robinson will score. Touchdown Atlanta. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yes, yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point attempt to follow here. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Washington offense back out there. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle, it's complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Back to throw here. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14 to seven. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. They'll set up a throw. Throwing it to him. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and the Falcons grab it. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. 
Atlanta regains possession of the football. And now they start in plus territory following that turnover as they'll try to get some points here before halftime. Vic now after the fumble recovery. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. On play action, Vic. Into the hands of Rising. That's complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. It's a game of 34. What my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now here's Vic. Now the pressure gets there and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the gun, Vic. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the great. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Taking it in from 14 yards out. And the Falcons will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 21-7. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was finished off by the 14-yard touchdown run. Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The Commanders back out late in this first half. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Middle of the field, he's got McClellan. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime.
One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They run from the shotgun with Washington. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. The commander's going to use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. A good position to be in here, second and inches. They'll look to throw. Pressure brought in get there for the sack. Now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Here comes third down at seven. Looking to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 31-yard line. That third down conversion, good for 23. So we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons' offense now. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. On oh, the slant, he'll get it to Jones. Still on his feet. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 58 yards. All came together for the offense on that one. A short throw that turned into a nice pickup. Big time yardage downfield and as a defender. Against that type of a route, you better take the proper angles. Otherwise, that's the end result. You give up a big chunk of yardage to the offense. From the red zone now, Vic. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. Vic with the incompletion on first down, and now that leads to second and ten. He'll look to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Here comes third and about a foot. It'll be Vic once more. 
Well, they would have gotten a conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Gardner, a lot of people think the tight end's a safety valve position, but I think in situations like this, he's often a primary receiver, and they missed an opportunity there. Yeah, missed an opportunity indeed to pick up the first. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Here's Vic. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And Washington will have it on the turnover on downs. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> They'll come out throwing here on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Now a handoff up the middle. Riggins, and he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll keep it on the ground. Riggins, and he's going to have a commander's first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. They'll look to throw now on first down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and one. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. Now here's a throw. It's complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing to train with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. They'll look to throw again. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Here's a quick throw caught out wide. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Washington passing game dialed in now. It's a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. 
And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 more yards for him there. It's a first down. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. On first down, Riggins. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown! A 16-yard touchdown. And the Commanders go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. Point after try forthcoming. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And the result, a touchdown for Washington. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. Getting set to go again on offense, we get a peek at Julio Jones now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. First down, Vic checks this one down. And he is going to lose yardage here. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple. And it's second down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? And Vic's throw there incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And the Washington offense heading out. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he's got him in wide open, complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And you're starting to sense the momentum possibly changing just a little here. You get the touchdown your previous drive, then you force a punt, and now this is a good positive play here to start this drive. 
And you can just sense the tide starting to turn here in a one-score game. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's a quick throw out wide. It's McLaurin. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Well, every lineman knows the rule. You only get a one-yard buffer beyond that line of scrimmage, and then the flag is thrown, and he got tagged for it there. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He completes this one to Terry McLaurin. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A good pick up there of 20 yards. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And yet again, it's McLaurin. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, so far, a little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. Back to throw again. And that is incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to and Maybe his rhythm got is confused. just off. He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. They'll look to throw here. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackle. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that, a full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. The drive begins with a handoff to Andrews. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. They'll run again here with Andrews. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. They'll come up now third and nine. To throw, Vic. And that is incomplete. Let's be smart. 
Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. That's taken at around the 40. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Now the commander's offense set to take over. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. He'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now back to throw. And that will be incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. One of those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. Washington going to send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They start on the ground with Andrews. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's a second and eight. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. Into the hands of Ryzen. That's complete. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up third and two. the play fake Vic uh, he had a man open but he missed him and it's incomplete well the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less we have to be able to convert and I guess every team would say that Charles but an opportunity missed there what they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point and they like some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them unable to do so on that play now on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away a big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10.
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. On second down now, Riggins. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman. The ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? This offense so far on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. Washington going to send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Yeah, Sanders now to return. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Vic readies to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Up the middle they go. Done. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 60 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from. Obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. 11 more on that one and another first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you've got to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. From the red zone now, Vic. And he's got it. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. The extra point splits the uprights. And the lead now up to 14. Five plays there on that drive. And it culminates in a Julio Jones touchdown.
Atlanta's 11 ready to go, and they kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. to throw now on first down firing quickly here and that's complete call it a gain of a yard and that's going to bring up second down now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw over the middle the catch made by Mitchell and they work this well upfield across the 45. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. They'll look to throw here on first down. A wide open, complete! And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. They'll run on first down. Riggins, and he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. 47 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? They'll keep it on the ground. Riggins. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. On third down, Riggins. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I'll bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit from the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute, they want their opportunity, and he seized his. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. Well, the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball.
And they'll begin by running the option. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now here's Vic. That's caught by Ryzen. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. At the 23, it's second and 12. Throwing, Vic. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That goes for a gain of 31. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. It's done. And showcasing those strong legs on that run. Getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead. First down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it. And you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back. But eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. 86 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and they'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Done. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And intercepted! Maybe the turning point they need! And the Commanders are right back in this football game. We're holding on to the lead at this stage in the second half. Those are the types of plays you really want to try and stay away from. And when you're a rookie, keeping your focus is something that you still have to work on all the time because there's so many distractions around you between the crowd noise and your coaches and your teammates. But the other part, you've got to learn how to finish. It's the two Fs for a rookie quarterback. The Washington offense set to take over. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He's got Smith here. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. But correct me if I'm wrong, Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. And quickly, they get to the line. Second and five. And his throw is incomplete. But well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Defense! 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 
The offense on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. That is caught. And he's going to have a commander's first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust. And that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the... And that is caught. Touchdown, Washington. From 10 yards out, and the Commanders have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion. But still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do. And, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm, I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Yeah, that's true. You've said that before. Kick team out there for the Commanders as they send this one away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Falcons offense set to go. I'm curious to see, Charles, about the play calling on this drive. Last time out, the interception that led to a touchdown. Here we are. I mean, very close. One score game. Yeah, and if I'm a defender, I'm actually chirping to you on the other side of the ball, said, hey, we picked off the last one. What you going to do about it now? <laughs> So when you do throw the football, high percentage, but throw it with confidence. Because if there's any hesitancy at all, it could end up in enemy's hands again. That throw by Vic, incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Vic now. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On third down, Vic. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now a first carry for their fullback. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. And again, they'll go right back to their fullback. And he is going to have a Falcons first down. And it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it.
Let's do this, man. Up the middle they go. It's done. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. Got to figure the rush is going to be fierce again as they come up second and 13. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation, we'll see. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football, so to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they could pick up something. Instead, they were throwing for a loss. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is. At the six-yard line. Now Washington. Down by five. 26 seconds to go. They'll have to go 90-plus yards. And a field goal does them no good. As they've got it with a first down. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. To... And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. So just nowhere to escape the pressure that time. He goes down for a safety, and that should all but do it here in this one. Yeah, they put up a good fight, but you're right. Now they have to kick it away, and this one definitely looks like a lost cause. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This will be fielded at the 17. Vic's going to take a knee, and that should just about do it. What a ball game this was. What an atmosphere this was. And the home team getting the late touchdown, getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can file away with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time? It's location, location, location. So being at home, that can be a big deal because remember, they were down to their final chance to retake the lead. That home field advantage, I think it helped fuel all of what happened for them down the stretch. A huge win. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.